In this video, I'm going to illustrate two points from Dan Odell's Better JavaScript article about code, about testing, and a little bit about documentation. But first, let's create a simple web page with addition functionality where we're gonna add two numbers together and display the result on the page. So let's go to terminal and here in Better JavaScript folder, I'm gonna create new file index.html and open it in text editor. So here we will have the simple HTML5 template and we call it better JavaScript. And here at the end of the body tag, we will include is gonna be jQuery. And the second one is our script. We call it script.js. Okay, let's save it. And one button. So the first input field will be number one. The second one will be number two. And the button will have type submit. So it will submit the form with the name of calculate. And also we need to have the div element with ID, let's say result, where we will display the result of our calculations. So let's save it. And now we are ready to write our script. So let's create script.js file. So here with the help of jQuery, we're gonna listen to the submit event on the form. And when that happens, first of all, prevent default, number one element. So we will have input with the name of number one and number two as well. After that, we want to have this result to be populated with text of the sum of these elements. So we're gonna need to parse int of number one value and add parse int of number two value, like this. And after that, we want actually to clean these fields by resetting values. Okay, let's save it. Now let's open it in the browser. And here it is, our two input fields. So three plus three equals six. Excellent, it works. So now let's have a closer look at our function. First of all, we have several responsibilities here. We are fetching the data from the DOM. Then we summon up numbers and even parsing them. Then we insert them into the DOM and then we clear the form. So in one method, we have DOM manipulation and logic tangled together. And that's not a good sign. So let's extract this logic from this callback function into separate module. And we're gonna define it right here in, this, in the same file. So first of all, let's define our application namespace. We call it application and it's gonna be an empty object. And then inside of this empty object, we define calc module, which is gonna be a function. And here how we define module. So now we're using module JavaScript design pattern. And that pattern allows us to encapsulate logic into the namespace like here we do with a calc and define public API. So first of all, it's a good practice to use strict in your functions. And then we define the public API of calc by returning object with the public API, like we want to have add. So now basically we can use this app calc like this, app calc dot add, okay? So now we need to define this add function so we do var add equals function and it takes two numbers and it returns parse int number one plus parse int number two. So now we need to delete the logic from the DOM manipulation code. So right here, I'm gonna delete all of this and I will call app.calc.add num1 val. Okay, let's save it and let's go to browse and have a look. So is it working? Yes, it is, excellent. So this module now is self-contained and it can be reused in other parts of our application as well as easily enhanced by additional functionality like multiplication or divide operations. And which is better now, our DOM logic is separated from our business logic. You can also practice this module pattern by breaking down DOM operations in separate module itself. Excellent, so as we now have this module, it's a good idea to document it. And it's very easy to do nowadays. So all we need to do is create a comment like this. So the first line is the description of the class module or method that we want to document. Then we specify that this is a class calc, we'll do app calc, and this is the static class. And then we do the same thing basically with add method. 
So it adds two numbers together and parse input to int first. So this is the description of the method. And then we specify that this is a method called add. And then we specify the parameters. So we have two parameters, they are both strings, and we describe them. So first number and second number. And then we describe the return value that it is an integer and that it is sum of two numbers. Very simple. So now we just save it. And we can now generate our documentation into HTML format. To do that, we need to install Node.js and after that, with the help of Node Package Manager, we want to install, for now I'm gonna globally install UEDoc.js that will download and install this package. Okay, now that we have done, we actually can just run the UEDoc command right here with a dot because we have all our JavaScripts right here in this folder. So let's do this and that generates our documentation. And if you go to the finder right here, you will see that we have the out folder and here we will have this index.html file, opening which we can see that we have this app calc defined, so we can click on it and see our documentation generated with our description right here and method as well. So it's very easy and it's a good idea to do that. So now we have the separate independent module and that means that it can and it should be tested. Actually, it should be tested before we write the implementation, but now we're gonna test it afterwards. I personally prefer Mocha and I will show you how to use this particular test framework. So to install it, just make the npm global install Mocha. And that's all that you need to do. So now we can create our test file and we're gonna create it in test folder and we call our file calc test.js. I also need to make directory. Okay, the first thing I need to define what kind of assertion library I'm gonna use. So I will use with the most common one, the assert, require assert. After that, I need to require the file where implementation resides. So in our case, that's the calc.js. You do not need to specify the extension of the file. And now I'm ready to write up my test. So I'm going to describe the calc class or module. And inside of this, I'm going to describe the add method. And here I'm just assert that two things are equal. That app.calc.add three and four, they're equal to seven. Okay, I'm going to save the file. And now let's go to terminal and run mocha command. Okay, we actually have not a calc, but a script. Okay, let's save it, go back to terminal, run Mocha again. And now we have a problem because Mocha doesn't know anything about jQuery. It's a good thing to separate module into another file and test it in isolation. So let's do this. We go back to editor, let's go back to our script, cut all of this and create new file here, I call it calc.js and paste it into here. Now in index.html file, I want to add another script, calc.js. And now in our test, so let's go back to test, I want actually to have calc. Let's go back to terminal, run mocha again, and now we're passing. This green color is just perfect. So let's see it red because of the error, because of the error in our logic. So we just make sure that it is equals to, for example, four. Now, if we go back and run Mocha, it fails and tells us exactly why it fails. It's pretty convenient. So now we have a module which resides in separate file. It is tested and it is documented. Okay, so in this video, we talked a little bit about using module JavaScript design pattern for creating objects with a public API, we saw how we can document them and how we can test them. I hope you found this video a little bit useful, so thank you very much for your time. 